The most amazing thing about the game Flappy Bird is the fact that it is so simple to build, but at the same time it has gathered millions and millions of downloads across the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. So in this series of videos, I'm going to be showing you how to build the game from scratch in Python using the module Pi game. So if you want to learn Python in a bit of an unorthodox way by building this game, or if you want to start off programming games in Pi game, then this is a good project to start off with. This video right here is going to be the first one of five in total, where we're going to be building the game from scratch. I'm going to make sure that the links to all the videos are going to be down in the description, so you can skip between the individual parts. In the very first video, in this one, we're going to start by building the scrolling background of the game. In the second episode, I'm going to be adding the bird and also implementing the flying mechanic of the bird. In the third episode, we're then going to be adding the pipes that move towards the bird. In the fourth episode, we're then going to add the collision mechanic. So whenever a bird flies against a pipe, it dies. And in the fifth and final video, we're going to be ending this series by adding the menu to the game. If you enjoy these videos, then do let me know by subscribing to the channel and leaving a like under this video, and I'll make more of them. In addition, you should know that all the code to this project is going to be in my GitHub, and the link to my GitHub is going to be down in the description as well. So if that helps you out and you want to check out the code, then feel free to do so. That being said, let us get started. Right here I have PyCharm open and we're going to create a new project. We're going to call our project Flappy and we're going to make sure that when we create a new project, we have the new environment checked because we want a virtual environment in our project. In addition to that, we do want to take the check mark out of this final box down here because we don't need a welcome script. Then we're going to press on create. Once our new project opens, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the folder with the assets and drag it into our project. Now this folder simply contains the images that we need to build the game. So if we have a look through this folder, you can see that I have a background image. I have images of our bird flying. I have a game over image. I have an image of the ground. Then I have the pipe bottom, the pipe top image, and a starting image, which we're going to use at the beginning of the game. The next thing we need to make sure is that we have the necessary modules installed. So let's go down to the terminal and type out pip install pygame. And you'll see that we get pygame installed in our virtual environment. As you can see here, it says successfully installed. And if you want to make sure that it really is successfully installed, you can type in pip list. And this command will list out all the individual modules that are currently installed. And as you can see, Pygame is one of them. The convenient thing about Pygame is that it has a lot of really helpful functions inside of it that we can use to build games. So that's why we're using it. The final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a Python file called main.py into my project. After dragging it in, let me open it up. You can see that there are just a couple of lines of code there, so nothing special. And these lines of code are going to be the basis for building the project. You can think of this code that I have up in the editor as the skeleton of our game. Pretty much any game programmed with Python and Pygame has some elements that you see here in it. Before we talk about the details of this code, let us briefly execute it and see what happens. So when I go ahead and run this, you can see all I get is a black window. And pay attention to this when I press on this red X at the top right hand corner, I can close the window. Absolutely amazing. So the window that just opened up a moment ago is the result of the code that we have in the editor at the moment. You can see that at the very top, I'm importing Pygame. I'm also importing exit from the module system. Then I'm initializing Pygame. I'm setting the Pygame clock, which allows us to control the frame rate of the game. Below that, I'm creating the window, which was pretty much the black box you saw. So I'm giving it a window height. I'm giving it a width and then creating the window. 
Then after that, I have one function in here, which is the quit game function. And this function allows us to quit the game by pressing the red X icon as I did earlier. And below that, I have the main method, which has the main loop within it. And the main loop is pretty empty at the moment. It has, well, a couple of elements. At the very top, I'm calling the quit game function, which allows us to, well, press the red X and close the window. Then I have a reset frame section where we are filling the window with the color black. So the 0, 0, 0 you see here are simply RGB values. And these values at the moment are, well, black. Then I have the clock tick, and within this, I pass in the argument 60. Now this limits the frames per second to 60. At the very end of the while loop, I have a display update, and then at the very end, I'm simply calling the main method. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we load in all the necessary images that we need to build the game. So that is exactly what this code block right here, which I've just pasted in does. So now we have this very nice list of images that we can reference and that we can then display on our window. So let's go ahead and do that with our very first image, which is going to be the background image. We're going to go down into our main loop and I'm going to write a comment, which is going to be draw background. And below that, I'm going to write window.blit and the blit method simply takes two arguments. It takes first the image we want to display, which over here is going to be skyline underscore image. And the second argument is the position where on the window we want to blit, or in other words, output the image. And that's going to be the coordinates zero, zero. So if we go ahead and press run, you can see that now we have this beautiful background in our canvas window. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be adding the ground to the game. The special thing about the ground is that it moves. So this is going to be a little bit more challenging than simply adding an image. Just below where we listed the images, we're going to add another comment and write game variables. And the first variable we're going to add is going to be the scroll speed and we're going to set it to one. This variable is going to set how fast the game runs. So the higher the number here, the faster the objects coming from the right hand side of the screen are going to be passing to the left. So in other words, the faster um, the ground is going to be moving. Below this first variable, we're going to be creating our very first class. This class is going to be called ground and it is going to inherit from pygame.sprite.sprite. When you write this out, make sure that this first sprite does not start with a capital letter, but the second sprite does start with a capital letter. Then we're going to create an init function, and this init function is going to take two arguments, x and y, which is going to be the coordinates of the ground piece which we're moving. Within this init function, the first thing we want to do is we want to initialize the base class, and we can do this by writing pygame.sprite.sprite dot init. Then we're going to specify the image of the ground. So we're going to set self.image equal to the ground image. And since we will need to manipulate the position of the ground element, we will use pygame rectangles. So we're going to set self.rect equal self.image.getRect. And we're going to set the x and y coordinates of this rectangle equal to the x and y coordinates which we've passed in as arguments. The pygame rectangle objects are really, really convenient, especially when it comes to checking for collisions, which we'll need later on, because it allows us to simply use methods where we can check for the over overlapping of the rectangle areas. Now that we're done with the init function, we're also going to add an update function. This function is going to be responsible for moving our ground elements from the right hand side of the screen to the left. So I'm going to add the comment move ground and below that we're going to set self.rec.x and we're going to subtract the scroll speed which we created earlier from the x position of the rectangle. In addition to that, we want to make sure that whenever one of these ground objects moves off of our screen, we want to delete it 
because we're not using it anymore. If it's off screen, you don't see it. So we're going to write if the x position of the rectangle is smaller than or equal to the negative window width, we're going to self dot kill the object. Now we're going to go down to the main function and in here I'm going to add another comment just to make sure that we have good structured code and we're going to over here um, initialize the initial ground element at the very beginning of the game. So we're going to set an x position ground, a y position ground, which are going to be the x and y coordinates respectively, and we're going to set them to 0 and 520. Next, we're going to create a sprite group. So we're going to set the variable ground equal to pygame.sprite.group. And to the sprite group, I'm going to be adding one ground object. And this ground object is in fact the very first one that we see appear on the screen when we start the game. I'm going to create a new section within our main loop. And this section is going to have a comment header, which is going to be draw. And this is going to be the section where we're going to be calling the draw function on the pipes, the ground, and the bird. But we'll get to that. So the first thing we're going to draw is the ground. So we're going to call ground.draw. And we're going to pass in the window as a argument. Now it's not enough to simply draw the ground. We also need to update it because of course we want to move it to the left hand side. So underneath we're going to create another comment with the header update. And this is going to be responsible for updating the pipes, the ground and the bird. So we're going to add the ground dot update beneath that. So if I run it at this stage, you will see that the ground object, which I have just created, is moving off of the screen to the left really nicely. But at the same time, no new ground objects are spawning on the right hand side. We would expect that to happen. So let's go ahead and do that. In the main loop, I'm adding another comment called spawn ground. And underneath, we're going to say that if the length of the ground list is smaller than or equal to two, then we're going to add another ground object to the ground group. And what you will be able to see now is that the ground is going to move continuously to the left and we always get new ground elements spawning seamlessly. So it looks like this ground is infinite, even though we're just moving individual objects to the left hand side, deleting them and adding new ones to the right hand side. So that's going to be it for this first episode. If you enjoyed it, then please do leave a like. It helps out a lot and it lets me know that you enjoy these videos and see you in the next video.